now we want to talk about lights and lights are a very complex topic and we will not cover every bit of lights and i think we could do hundreds of hours about that so i will cover only the basics and the biggest difference in lighting for render man is that we will not have those render man lights anymore inside of the usd context but we will have the usd lights itself and they are working for all available render engines that have and provide a hydra delegate for usd so we also have no environment light anymore i will create a new dome light and link it directly underneath and i will choose an hdr so i have one from polygon it's a free one and as you can see, it was already converted to the um, random and text format. Of course, you can also use the HDR form format. But when you use the HDR um, itself, make sure that the HDR is already converted to ACCG. Otherwise, the color toning will not be correctly. Since random and is um, completely working or based on ACCG these days. And yeah, as you can see, I can dial the intensity and, and so I can dial the dome light by itself. I can also create a distant light and we have many other lights as well. So we, we have to use a bigger intensity, something like that. And so we have our second sun on Tatooine. And maybe we should dial down the temperature either about the color or about the color temperature from the light itself. And we can also do this for the HDR and now we are truly on Tatooine. So this is no advertisement for Star Wars, but yeah, I like this right now. And as you can see, usually we could add a tremendous amount of more lights to that. And at some point, this comes becomes really a big problem. So, and for that, what we can use is the so-called light mixer. And inside of the light mixer, we will have all of our lights that we will have in the shot. And we can drag and drop each one of these into the sliders tab and can work with each one of these and can dial them down. Of course, I made copies of them, which makes no sense. So back to two lights. And now we have, of course, a little problem. We need to create a new light mixer because we deleted some lights. So here we have them again, drag and drop them right here. And now we have those sliders and can dial down the lights as we like, as we want. So this is really, really a great tool. We can also solo lights. So we can say we want only to see those lights right in here. We can also create a collection of lights. So we will um, select the lights we want and hit this little plus button so we have a new collection and call this my lights for example and now we have a new collection with a totally new slider and this slider is only specific for those grouped lights for the lights that we have inside of this collection and yeah this is really nice what we also can do is um so as you can see we can dial down all lights to some specific value maybe completely to zero all those lights in the group but we what what you all can also can do is we can um use a light linker to specifically say only this portion of geometry should um, get some light but here comes 
something you need to know. So where it is light linkers right here. The light linker works on object basis. So you can drag the box right in here. And yeah, maybe we should. It's it's a bit problematic sometimes also with the um, updates here in the render. So you can see you always have to restart the render to get a proper update. You can also go the other way. You can drag and drop those lights. So I will try to work with the dome light and I will exclude the uh, grid itself. And as you can see, it has worked. So you better work with the lights itself instead of the geometry. This is not working correctly. And yeah, this is how you can work with the light linker. I think you have to experiment a bit with it and further updates will provide more support for for those tools. And of course, um, we can also use um, other lights such as the spotlight itself. The spotlight itself is also a bit different. So we have no direct cone. So you can yeah, dial it up a bit as you can see. And we can change the radius from the emission plane in that uh, form it's a disk. We can also go over to point. And now we have this, when we choose the point option, we will have the sphere or this half sphere right now. So we should hide this of course we don't want to have this in the scene, so it's hidden. And there's something we should also take care of in RenderMan. So softness is working, as you see. The angle itself is also working. And as you can see, the barn doors are not working. And not all of these features are implemented yet into Houdini Solaris. So, of course, we can play with the color itself. The exposure is also working. Color of the light is working. And we can also stop the diffuse multiplier emission. So we will have um, only specular lights or we can do the opposite of it. And as you can see, the barn doors are not working. The softness is working. The angle is working for those spotlights. And of course, we can also deactivate and activate the shadow shadowing. This happens and is working on all of these lights. There is something uh, nice about RenderMan, you can change the intensity in the near distance. That means, let us say you have a light very close to an object. Uh, maybe I should choose a point light. Better for demonstration, point light. So we have it here. We will bring it close to the box. So let us say here and we may make it a lot brighter. So and hide it from the camera. And as you can see, um, we have an area which has no light. This is because of the light itself. And we also have a very drastic lighting at the shape itself. What happens if you have a machinery or a car and you want to place some of those lights directly into the glass object, for, uh, for example? You would have uh, some problems inside of those glass objects and here comes the intensity near distance. This will help you to yeah, essentially dial down the intensity of the light in, in the 
in the near distance of the light itself but the light will not um, yeah will not be deactivated of course you have to um, work with the intensity but as you can see no direct light in indication anymore on the box itself you have to play a bit um, with the correct placing and with the correct values but this is something really handy as you can see you can exclude it in the in in the near distance so what we can also do on the random man side is we can activate that the light is only tracing light a tracing light uh, this is also really nice for glass objects in my experience and we can also um, raise the light sampling so when you put it to two the light itself will emit two more times of samples so this is a very nice solution to be able to shed some light into a corner of a room for example sometimes when you have a room um, maybe I should demonstrate this we hmm, yeah so we could we should go back to here here we have our object so and let us say that's a wall and we will duplicate this geometry something like that oh that's the wrong one 90% oh. ninety degrees I mean so now we have a corner right in here yeah it looks ugly however it works we go back to stage and sometimes when you light a scene or a room you don't have direct lighting into the room itself so maybe I should deactivate the dome light I will deactivate everything that I don't need and I will dial down so you see you have this really harsh shadow in the corner um, from the light from outside and even when you would have some bounce lights in the distance so let us say I put a area light right in here to be able to have some bounce lighting oh, maybe we should turn it around and maybe not that sprite so let us say this is some form of a bounce you sometimes run into the situation that you still have very harsh noise in those areas in those corners and when you have something like those problems you can place like in the old days a very little sphere into this corner or behind a harsh or into the area of a, of a small shadow uh, of a harsh shadow uh, maybe we should do this much better like so and like so oh no updates um yeah it takes a while okay here we have it once again so uh then you can help render man to yeah to bring some more samples into this area so you can either crank it up or you can leave it quite low but with a larger sample amount and this sometimes helps to resolve the noise in the in harsh shadow areas so this is really really nice and i use this quite often not just in indoor scenes 
but as well as in environmental scenes. So when you have a really harsh, unpleasing looking shadow, you can use this trick to yeah, distribute more samples into this area. And we also have the multi scattering approximation, which is for volume rendering um, specifically. This option is not working in LOPS right now. So you will only have a working solution inside of the OBJ context for aggregated volumes. And yeah, so this is currently bugged and will be resolved in the next release, as I have heard. And so um, we should not look at this right now. Um, of course, you can also use the other options when you use the Karma render engines. They are quite differently to RenderMan, but for RenderMan, this is everything important that you need to know about lights. So, see you in the next chapter.